Now, if you're sharp, you'll realize we're not looking at Affinity Photo. We're looking at Photoshop Elements instead. And that's because for the longest time, I always used to say you must rotate before you crop. And I'm gonna to have to use Photoshop Elements to show you why. That's because in Photoshop Elements, once we crop our image, any pixels that we did crop out are gone for good. Now, Affinity doesn't do this, and I'm not really sure why I would need it, but I'm getting ahead of myself and take a look at this image. Right, this guy went away to somewhere beautiful and interesting, and he decided he was the most beautiful and interesting thing there, so he cropped the picture close. And then, let's come and crop the picture. Come down nice and close here. And up here, get Mr. Fabulous really nice and big in the picture. There. And then he realized he'd forgot to rotate it. Look, the sea is running downhill. So let's come and straighten the whole image. There we go. And oh, now we've got a problem. We've got these white triangles around the side of our image with clearly our photo sitting at an angle. No problem, come to the crop tool again. Draw out a rectangle and we've got to get rid of these white areas. And already you can see what the problem is. Yep, bit of white just there still. And commit to that. And Oh dear. You can see as you rotate a picture around and then you have to crop afterwards, you can't help but make the picture frame smaller, which is why if we crop first and then rotate, it always used to be the case. You'd only have to crop all over again. And this happens, Mr. Fabulous trying to hide his bald spot or whatever. Now that was in the old days, but affinity is different. Let's take this picture into affinity photo. Affinity photo is clever. Let's do the same again. Come to crop, original ratio, cut right down, enter. Oops, made a mistake. The sea is running downhill, so come to our crop tool again. This time, rotate, and we can do that no problem. Affinity kept a record of all the pixels that we lost when we cropped, and they're there, just waiting to be used again if we need them. Bang! If we wanted a larger part of the sea showing and less of him, obviously, come to the crop box again and stretch up and out again. It looks like I'm stretching into thin air, but when I press the enter button, those pixels are there just waiting in the wings to be claimed back again. Now come right into this top corner here. That was the original edge of my photo. It can't invent pixels just to put on the end. Actually, there is something we could do about that using the clone stamp tool, but that's for another time. But this ability to reclaim pixels that we cropped out originally, that is very handy. Thank you people at Serif. And over the years, I've used plenty of software that doesn't give you this. And that was why I used to say rotate before you crop, so that you wouldn't end up cropping twice and then finding everything too cramped. Now I'd say just do it any which order you like. Crop, rotate, rotate, crop, doesn't matter. I tend to rotate first, and that's more out of habit than anything else. But make sure you do both at the same time, and try and get the picture frame and the elements within the picture frame how you want them before you start adjusting your tones and colours, for the reasons I mentioned in the last videos about getting accurate readings when you're sorting out your dark and light. So I've just pressed Command-Z a few times to get us back to where we were. And while we're here, look, we've got two possible lines to line up to. We've got the horizon line with a C. We've also got this line here, the thing that he's standing on. So which of those two horizontal lines would you line up to? That's easy, the sea horizon, it's always flat. Generally speaking, if you're going to line up using the horizontal lines in the picture, use the horizon or whatever's closest to the horizon in preference to close up objects. And look, while we're here, let's come back to the crop tool. Affinity has this nice little option here, straighten. Click on it and you get this thing. It looks like a rule, actually, it's not a rule, it looks a lot more like a spirit level to me. And if I come here and click and drag out a line from one end to the other following the horizon, the minute I let go, bang, the whole thing straightens up, which is very nice. And also if I press Command Z and I use the straighten tool again, you can also use it vertically like that, which is very useful, but I don't know which way that guy is leaning. So press Command Z and come back to my straighten tool. 
if you've got a C there, always use that straighten up with. And there you go. And then I'm going to come to original ratio so I don't get any strange aspect ratios. Crop in so I lose these little transparent triangle areas at the edge of the screen. And say about there, drag it down so that the C horizon is on that line there. And enter and finally a slightly more bearable crop so in general what do you line up to horizontal lines or vertical lines if you've got the horizon line up to that but if you don't have the horizon and things are less clear try lining up with vertical lines and here's why when we see something we wish to take a picture of we usually move our camera side to side not tilt up and down. We may have our camera at a railed angle by mistake, but still we move side to side. If our torus takes a photo pointed directly at a wall with a camera at an awkward roll angle, it may be fixed in a jiffy. We can rotate easily. But if our torus decides that the brick wall is not the most exciting thing in the area, he may get dangerously creative and decide to take a picture looking down the street. And just look where that radical thinking has got him. Instead of the nice parallel lines in the last photo, we have perspective lines that angle up and down. And thus, we cannot be certain which of these lines is the best for making our photograph level. But wait, any student of the visual arts will probably be able to tell you that when you make a one or two point perspective drawing, any lines that were vertical in the real world will stay vertical in the picture they are creating. And it is for that reason that we can usually line up the vertical lines in the picture with the vertical guidelines of the crop box. An exception to this rule is when our excitable tourist is in New York for the first time and is taking pictures of the skyscrapers. In that case, he will point his camera up and get vertical perspective lines. If he was facing the building at a right angle, we could use the horizontal lines to line things up. But if he took the picture facing up and at a non-right angle to the building, we're pretty much stuffed. Luckily, the budget for this video series is such that the nearest our tourist will get to New York is watching reruns of Sex and the City. Or even both films of the same name. Oh look, our chap is excited. Goodbye. <laughs>